All right, so let's try this one. It says the Higher Education Research Institute at UCLA collected data from 200,967 incoming first-time, full-time freshmen from 270 four-year colleges and universities in the U.S. 71.3% of those students replied that yes, they believe that same-sex couples should have the right to legal marital status. Suppose that you randomly picked eight first-time, full-time freshmen from the survey. You are interested in the number that believes that same-sex couples should have the right to legal marital status. All right, so I'll always start with what is the variable? And I, I spotted it here because I saw the number, right? The number that believes that same-sex same -sex couples should have the right to legal marital status. Now, this is always inside of your random sample, and be careful here, because sometimes you'll think, I had a sample this large. No, right? It says, suppose that you randomly pick eight students. So I only have eight students in this, in this case. So X is the number of students in sample of eight. that believe that same-sex couples should have the right to legal marital status. Okay, that's a lot to write in there, but we're, we're gonna talk to eight folks, see how they feel about this. Now, is X discrete or continuous? Well, I would count the number of students in my sample that were for same-sex marriage, um, but I'm not gonna measure it, so it's definitely discrete. What values can X take on? Well, if there are eight folks in my sample, zero could believe that same-sex couples should have the right to marry, one could believe, two all the way up to, Eight. All right. Now, if I was going to make a table, I have my nine values, right? Plus, I'd pick an extra column just for um, labeling. So I'd have 10, 10 columns in that table. That's on the high side. It's not impossible, but that's still a lot to do. So again, I'm going to say to myself, well, is this binomial? Because if I can make this binomial, or not make it, if I realize it's binomial, then I get all of these shortcuts, right? I don't have to make a table. I can just use that symbol. I don't have to make a tree diagram to find all these probabilities. I can use binomial PDF and CDF. So let's see if it is. All right, so let's go through the four properties. So one, I have N equals. All right, do I have a fixed number of trials? Yes, I am talking to eight students at random. All right, can I deem something a success? And the way we're counting, a success in this case would be, be that a student believes same-sex couples have the right to marry. All right, are trials independent of one another? Well, if I'm picking at random, they should be, right? So what the first student says, like, yes, I believe this or no, I don't, it should not have any bearing on what the second student says. So I'm gonna make the leap that trials are independent. All right, for probability of success, they told me that from that population, about 71.3%, believed that students had, uh, that same-sex couples had the right to legal marital status. So I'll have here, and I'm actually, I'm going to erase this and just put it off to the side because I'm getting things a little too scrunched up. Let me just put option four over here. So for four, I had P would equal, I'm going to write this as a decimal, 0.713. All right, so when that happens, when you can go through all four properties, 
right? I don't need to make the table. I can just say my variable is distributed binomially. I have eight students I'm talking to, and the likelihood that any one student will believe that same-sex couples have the right to marry is about 71.3%. Okay. Now, I, I wanted to drive a point home, so in part F I actually said, hey, I know you don't have to make the table, but let's go ahead and do it anyways, just so we can practice it. So I am going to make the giant table here. All right. So I'm going to need nine columns. Well, actually, I'm going to need 10 columns because I have nine values of my variable and I need a labeling column. And again, you wouldn't typically have to do this, but we're at the end of the chapter. So I just want to remind us where we've come from and practice making that table together. Okay, let me start filling this in. So I've got my labeling column here. And then we got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and finally 8. Whew. Okay, now to get any of these individual numbers, I just need to do binomial PDF. All right, um, so let me give you a for example. Let's, let's start with the larger one. And I'm starting over here because if there's a 71% chance that students are... Um, that students believe same-sex couples have the right to marry, it's going to be more likely that all eight of my samples say yes than all zero. So I expect these to be pretty small numbers, which we'll get to in a moment. That's why I just want to start with something that's a little bit easier to write out. So if I wanted this specific number, right, if I want the probability that x is exactly eight, that would mean run a binomial PDF. And here we would go 10, no, nope, not 10, excuse me, 8. There were only 8 students in our sample, 8.713, and then 8 again. All right, so let's see what that number gives me. It looks like it's about 0.067. So let me go ahead and write that down. This would have been 0 0.067. Okay. Um, if I wanted to do it for seven, I could rerun that command, but oops, excuse me, change the last number to seven. And you can see that's about 0.215. And I don't wanna rerun this command each time. I wanna be efficient. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this through my lists. Now, if we look in here, I've got some old data. Let me clear all of that out. And then, like always, I'm going to put my values of my variable in my list, in my L1, excuse me. And when I get those in there, then I'm going to go up into the definition of L2. So L2 has the black background, and I'm going to use my lists like a spreadsheet. So I would like my calculator to do the binomial PDF 
All right, we had eight students. The chance of success for any one student was 0.713. And I would like my calculator to do every value in L1 and populate L2. Oops, let me write L1 in here, excuse me. So when I hit enter, this is gonna populate. So let's see what we got, all sorts of stuff. Now, we gotta be careful here. Remember I said these were gonna be really small numbers. I'm um, sorry, let me point to it. These first few were gonna be really, really small because if 71% of your population is for same-sex marriage and you talk to eight people, it's gonna be pretty unlikely that you get zero people in that random sample. So while this is 4.6, you gotta think, well, every probability is a number between zero and one. And you can see the e to the negative five here. So we wanna be real specific that this is really 0.000046. So let me write this in, and I gotta be real tiny. I gotta do it diagonal, 0, how many was it? Oh, there's another zero, four, six. All right, so if it's e to the negative five, I actually have four zeros out in front of this, this first digit of four. Here, I had e to the negative four, so I need three zeros out in front of nine, so that's gonna be point oh 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 nine one. All right, and then here, I can actually finally start to do it. Now I can just have point oh oh eight. All right, I can fit that in. And then let me fill these in. So 0 0.040, 0 0.123, 0 0.244, and what's the last one we need to fill in? 303. And I'll, I'll put 303, but you can see our, our two other values, right? There's 215 and there's 067. But we'll put in 0 0.303. All right, and just like always, these would sum to one if I was going to do this. We, um, we talked about how you don't have to have a PDF in table form. You could also do it in a histogram form, but we haven't done it in a little while. So just for, to review that concept, if I go into my stat plots, I'm actually still ready to go because I haven't done a stat plot since I made that histogram for us way back in example two. So I'm gonna hit zoom nine and I expect to see something a little bit wonky, which, which I do. And that's because our X scale, they're making a rectangle every eight units, which is kind of silly. We want them to make it every one unit. So let me change this out. Um, the other thing I notice is if I go to eight units, I don't need to go all the way out to 16, right? So if the max here is eight, maybe I go to nine and just give myself some room. All right, and I still imagine that the, the scale isn't gonna be good because look at your Y max, it's 1.09, that's larger than one. And in terms of our Y values, it looks like the largest number I got to was 0 0.303. So I'm actually gonna, reduce this a little bit. I'm gonna make it go to 0.4, all right? And then I'm gonna see graph. If I like my window, I'll, I'll keep it. If I don't, I'll adjust it. But that's looking like a better histogram. I can see it's skewed left, so the mean's gonna be less than the median, all right? But And I see it's got this peak here. If I wanna trace it, it's gonna be at uh, six, right? That's, that's the most likely outcome, that six of my eight will um, believe that same-sex marriage or excuse me, same-sex couples have the right to marry. All right, so we've got that. All right, so let's, let's take a look at part G. So I'm gonna move this up so we can see everything, hopefully. All right, so for part G, it says, on average, how many would you expect to answer yes? So yes to the question, I believe, student, I'm sorry, I believe same-sex couples have the right to marry. Now this is asking for the mean, because this is binomial, we can use n times p. So because I'm binomial, I'm just gonna say mu is n times p. Okay. So mu is n times p, which in this case, I had eight students with a probability of success of 0.713. Let's see what that number is. So we'll go eight times 0.713. We get about 5.704. So I expect to have 5.704 students out of my eight saying, yes, they believe same-sex couples have the right to marry. 
And that's, that's why you see most of the weight in the probabilities between five and six. All right, because right through here, 54% of our, our observations live. All right, now for the standard deviation, all right, I will go back to my formula and I will, oh, not my formula, but my trait table. I'm in the binomial column and I want standard deviation, so it's square root NP, one minus P, right? So sample size, success rate, failure rate. And then I'll put all of that under a square root. So we've got the square root of, again, sample size, success rate, and failure rate. That's a little cramped, let me spread that out. All right, so here we go. One minus P, okay. So in our case, this is gonna be the square root of what we had eight times our success rate of 71.3%. And we're gonna go on our failure rate of point, one minus 0.713. So whatever this number is, great. Let's just figure out what it is numerically and we'll tack some units onto it. So I already have eight times 0.713. I'm gonna multiply this number by one minus 0.713. All right, and then I will take the square root of that number and I get about 1.279, all right? So this is 1.279 students, right? Technically freshman students, but students, okay? And just to kind of connect some ideas, we did have the table in L1 and L2. All right, so if you look back in my data, there is my table in L1 and L2, and I wanna show you this connection. Right? If you were gonna go off of the table to do the mean and standard deviation, you would do one bar stats L1, L2, you would respectively read X bar for the mean and sigma for the standard deviation. So let me just show you what this would leave you with. All right, one bar stats L1, weight it with its probabilities in L2. There's your mean, there's your standard deviation. All right, so like I said, binomials just give us a shortcut to doing all of that, but all of these things do connect. All right, now let's see what we got here. All right, so for I and J, we're gonna ask a couple of probability questions. So for I, it's what is the probability at most five reply yes. So I want probability, and I have to think about what symbol do I want for at most five? So I'm gonna have an X here and a five here, All right? And your options are, could I have the equal sign? Could I have less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to? So let me just put this in a bubble here. It's not part of this problem. We have to figure out which specific one we want. So you can have the equal sign, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or greater than or equal to. Those are your options. So if we say at most five, that is not equal, right? At most. So if I said at most five, I want less than or equal to five freshmen. So here we go, less than or equal to. All right, so if I want a probability with less than or equal to, and I'm in the binomial column, right? So I'm gonna go to my trait table. I'm in this binomial column, how to calculate probabilities. I don't have the equal sign. I do have the less than or equal to sign. So I'm gonna straight up go binomial CDF. So we're gonna say this is binomial CDF of, we had eight students, 71.3% chance of success, and we wanted five or fewer, right? Or at most five. So I'm gonna go ahead, run this. All right, so we'll go binomial CDF, eight, 0.713 against five. Oops, you can't see any of that, excuse me. So let me run this again. We'll go binomial CDF, eight, 0.713, five. And when I hit enter, I'm getting about 0.415 or 42%. Now, if you wanted to for this one, let me just move the paper down so our table's back in it. If I wanted x being less than or equal to five, all right, that would have included zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So you could have added these six numbers up. And if you add those six numbers up, you will get about, not about, you will get 0.415. All right, so you could add six PDFs together, 
but I think it's much more efficient to just use the CDF version. Okay. So let me erase these because we're going to do another probability question and this will change each time. All right. So this now says, what is the probability that at least two say yes? So I want now the probability that at least two freshmen are going to say yes. So let me go ahead and see probability and then at least two. So when we have P and our parentheses, which symbol do I want? In this case, I want greater than or equal to, right? Because we want at least two freshmen. So down here, I want X greater than or equal to two. Okay, so let's go, let me see if I can get the table in the same view as this. I can almost do it. All right, so we'll hold tight here because I think I can still see my symbol here and my table up here. If I want X greater than or equal to two, all right, I want to include two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I could add these one, two, three, four, five, six. I could add these seven numbers together. That's fine. All right, but I think the easier way to see it is if you want two on up, you do not want one on down. Right? These are the only two I don't want to include. And since these all total out to one, if I just subtract these two numbers from one using the complement rule, by default, I'll have these other seven numbers. So instead of adding those seven PDFs together, I'm gonna say this is one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to one. Right, I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna use that complement rule. And then when I do this, this is one minus binomial, this time CDF, 8.7131. And let's see what that number is. Okay, so I'm gonna do, let's try, oops, excuse me, one minus binomial CDF, and we will do 8.7131, and it's gonna be pretty close to one because those probabilities were really, really tiny. So yeah, we get 0.999, okay. So what's the likelihood that if you talk to eight people, at least two will believe same-sex same sex couples should be married? It's practically one. It happens 999 times out of 1,000. All right, gang, that's a wrap on Chapter 4. I'll see you in a few. Bye.